with the aviation industry taking steps to reduce carbon emissions. Now on BBC World News, Samir Hashmi is joined by a panel of business leaders and experts at the Dubai Air Show to discuss whether there's a sustainable future for flying. And for more, go to bbc.com slash talking business. Hello and welcome to a special edition of Talking Business with me, Samir Hashmi. I'm here at the Dubai Air Show and I'll be asking, can flying ever go green? With more people flying than ever before, there are growing concerns about the environmental impact of planes. The air transport industry says that it's taking steps to limit carbon emissions. But how realistic are those claims? I'll be speaking to a group of experts to find out if aviation can make the shift to a cleaner future. But first, I went to see the latest innovation on display at this year's Dubai Air Show. Today we are flying more than ever before and that growth is set to continue. By 2037, more than 8 billion passengers will be taking to the skies. But all this jet setting is taking its toll. Currently, air transport accounts for around 2% of carbon dioxide emissions produced globally. And they're growing at a faster rate than expected. The industry has pledged to reduce those emissions by half by 2050 compared with 2005 levels. But is the sector on track and how will it get there? The industry is working on innovations aimed at curbing emissions with some of them on display here at the Dubai Air Show. Airlines are shifting towards more efficient engines like this one by Rolls-Royce, designed to burn less fuel and produce fewer emissions. Boeing is here too. They have announced a partnership with Etihad Airways to operate a new eco-friendly Dreamliner aircraft from next year. And an increasing number of aeroplanes coming to the market have been built with lighter weight materials and better aerodynamic design like this Airbus 350XWB operated by Fiji Airways. Meanwhile, some players are also trying out new alternative fuels to fly. Over the last decade, more than 150,000 flights have flown using biofuel. Now companies are experimenting with electric power. Take a look at this prototype. It's a racing plane called the Air Race E. It's entirely powered by battery. It's set to take the skies next year in the world's first electric air race. Overall, a lot of innovations are underway to help cut down emissions, but it's not clear how long before they take off. Well, I'm here with three guests to get insights into how big is this a challenge for the industry and also talk about technology and innovation that will really address this issue. I have with me Phil Kernock, who's the Chief Engineer of Civil Future Programs at Rolls-Royce, uh, Dr. Sandra Bur Schaeffer, who's the head of Airbus Group Demonstrators and Chief Executive of Airbus up next, and last but not least, Dr. Alejandro Rios Galvan, who's the Director at Sustainable Bioenergy Research Consortium at Khalifa University. Thank you for joining us. If you talk about the airline industry, they produce 2% of the world's carbon emission, and that's expected to rise even further. How big a challenge is this, Alejandro, for the industry? Well, it, without a doubt, it's a significant challenge. And so the industry is looking at this with, with very keen eyes, and they're looking at different strategies to try to reduce that carbon footprint. One of those strategies is, of course, using alternative fuels or sustainable aviation fuels, and that is part of the whole technology package that needs to come into play for reducing the carbon footprint of the aviation industry. Okay, you're talking about how more people are flying and we just saw a plane taking off. <laughs> Sandra, that's the other big problem. More and more people are flying, so this problem is just going to get bigger. It is true, but over the last decades, the traffic has grown as well. We forecast that in the next 15 to 20 years, air traffic will double again, which means there is a big uh, expectation from the aerospace industry to get to sustainability. And it is a key question for us and a key priority And all decisions taken basically from the top level to down to the shop floor. And it is about emission, of course, it is about propulsion system, but it goes much 
beyond that, it is about materials, it is about the whole life cycle of the engine and the aircraft, how do you recycle it, and all those questions we want to address. Phil, what are the areas which are showing promise as far as technology and innovation is concerned that could really address this issue? Yeah, well, I think um, engine technology, we've been working on um, new engines and improving engines for some time now. If you compare an engine today for a, a flight today compared to a flight in, say, the 1990s, it probably burns half the carbon, um, burns half the fuel and produces half the carbon it did now. So we've come a long way, but looking to the future, we're going to need to um, accelerate that improvement and bring in quite interesting and exciting new technologies. We um, talk a lot about electrification, what that can do in um, uh, some of the shorter range applications of flight and um, sustainable aviation fuel and different fuels and ways of operating in the future that can reduce that carbon footprint. So let's start with what your company and you mm. are closely associated with engines. Yes. Uh, because that's really at the heart of an operation. What's happening on that front? Uh, are there engines that are burning less fuel? As I said, engines have been improving over time as aircraft have been. Um, we're looking at new technologies in the next 10 years, um, our ultrafan concept that will take um, uh, fuel burn even lower and reduce emissions. And then once you've um, got the latest, greatest gas turbine on your aircraft, the next thing you look at is um, the fuel you're burning. And is there a more uh, sustainable way of producing that fuel? Uh, that, that's, what, that's what we'll be looking at for the larger aircraft, the sort of the wide body aircraft and the single arm aircraft. And then looking at the smaller end for regional, electrification is a really good opportunity to, as, as the car industry has, uh, move to more electric vehicles that mean that you can have a carbon neutral flight. Sandra, how promising is this project looking, what Phil was talking about, getting engines that burn less fuel, and how open are airlines to adapting them? Over the last decades, our aircrafts have hugely evolved. If you look at the latest single aisle new series, A330 news, A350, they burn something between 20 to 30 percent less than previous generation. And for every ton of fuel saved, you save more than three tons of CO2 emissions. Electric is the other area that uh, seems to be, uh, you know, under focus. How's that shaping up? Sandra, you want to... Uh, electric is definitely a very important part and in Airbus we have been working on electrification over the past decade and if you remember in 2015 we had our little EFAN all electrical aircraft crossing the channel that was at 60 kilowatt. Today we have launched with Rolls-Royce an EFAN X which will fly in 2021 and there we talk about 2 megawatt hybrid electrical aircraft. 2 megawatt is equivalent to the power of 10 medium sized cars if you want so it is a huge step. Now Alejandro I, I want to get you in here because uh, we spoke about electric and we spoke about engines really but then you are working on alternative fuels and that is also seen an area that's showing promise. Tell us a little about that. Well, um, as has been uh, described briefly, uh, there are a number of goals that the industry has set. And this long-term goal to reduce the carbon footprint of the aviation industry by half, taking into consideration year 2005 as the baseline, is a major, major challenge. And so the way in which the industry is facing that challenge is through the development of new technology and within that sphere we have what are called sustainable aviation fuels. So these sustainable aviation fuels really have, have to come from an alternative source and for the most part uh, the industry is looking at plant-based uh, biofuels. And So these plant-based biofuels have the capacity to reduce the carbon footprint in the life cycle of these fuels anywhere between 50 and 80 percent of the when, when you compare them to fossil based alternatives and so this is one of the major components in terms of technology that will be used by the industry so that the long-term goal can be reached specifically more along the lines of these wide body jets the the, the you know the, the aircraft that carry 500 passengers from Dubai to Los Angeles or from Dubai to New York. These long range flights really won't have an alternative solution in the next 30 to 40 years. But then the problem with biofuels is, for example, it's still quite expensive and it's not scalable at this stage it looks like. So do you think that's going to be a big challenge? How can you bring the cost down? So I think that there's been a significant amount of uh, advancement in the last 10 years. You know, you, 
maybe 10 years ago, you, you would see a liter of biofuel that would cost approximately 400 times when compared to a liter of fossil-based jet fuel. Today, depending on the market, you can probably reach parity or anywhere between 1.5 and 3 times the cost. And so the cost curve has gone down significantly. Okay, so those were some thoughts about uh, the solutions, but most of them are long term. After the break, we, I'm going to discuss with them that what can be done in the short to medium term to address this issue. We'll be back after this break. from the world of film, from Hollywood blockbusters Can you introduce me as Joker? to international art house cinema. <laughs> I'll cover all the major film festivals and speak to the biggest names to bring you in-depth analysis on the latest films and cinema trends. Join me, Tom Brook, for Talking Movies on BBC World News. You don't want an election. He doesn't want this general election. They don't want an early general election. We do want an election, but... They're too cowardly! We can't go on like this. Prime Minister, are we heading for a general election? If that's where we're heading, that's where we're heading. A possible general a election. general election. A snap election. I cannot wait. I can't wait. We are ready! On. on we go to the general election. The UK general election. Watch it unfold on BBC World News. Welcome back to Talking Business. We are here at the Dubai Air Show. We'll continue talking to our guest just in a moment. But first, I caught up with the boss of the largest carrier in this region, Sir Tim Clark, the president of Emirates. And I began by asking him, how big a challenge is this for the airlines? We're all aware of climate change. We're all aware that the effects in the medium and long haul that could have on mankind. But the aircraft of today burns 50% less per seat than it used to do 30 years ago as we try to improve and also the back of house efficiencies that we've done through AI and uh, tech coming into everything that we do. Result is we can afford to offer seats at a lower price. Result is demand increases. I mean, so, air travel will double in terms of people traveling today. By 20, 20, 2037 you're talking about 8 billion people flying. Now these are all the same people who are very conscience stricken about the effect on the environment. There will be an element, a growing element, that will say, I'm not going to fly. I'm not going to go on a holiday, which involves flying, so I'll stay vacation, staycation, as they call it. Um, but is that a concern for the airline industry? We are seeing evidence of flight shaming actually leading to a slight drop in air travel in countries like Sweden, if the movement catches up. I, I, I don't think this is significant. There are bigger, bigger forces at play that affect the airline industry at the moment, not the least of which is the sort of trade wars and everything else going on. They have a material, clear and present uh, effect on what we do. Um, I, again, I'm not belittling or being disingenuous to those elements of the community, whether it be Extinction Rebellion or the Flight Shaving Program, who are trying to bring focus on the fact that we aren't doing enough at the speed we should be doing, given the, the imperative that, that uh, science is telling us. And I 100% share that view. The airline industry is trying to do its very best, not just Emirates, but everybody. That was Sir Tim Clark from Emirates. I'll continue talking to my guests, Phil Kernock from Rolls-Royce, Dr. Sandra Wurschefer from Airbus, and Dr. Alejandro Rios Galvan from the Sustainable Bioenergy Research Consortium. Now, the industry has pledged to uh, cap, you know, net carbon dioxide emissions or CO2 emissions at T20 levels. And then they're talking about by 2050 to reduce emissions to half of 2005 levels. Is this being too ambitious? Sandra? I think we have to consider it globally and it is true that there's no single solution to address that big challenge, but in a combination there are several solutions that put together will allow us to get there. We talked about sustainable aviation fuel, which definitely is the solution for the very short term. We will then be looking into synthetic hydrogen fuels, for example, which could turn up also in a near future because they are roughly based on today's engine's mm. uh, design. We can also look at air traffic management. There's a lot to gain here. 
and we announced fellow flight at the Dubai Air Show, which is a new concept of pairing aircrafts together and basically mimicking what birds are doing. If you fly in the updraft of the wake of the previous aircraft, you actually can gain on a trip 5 to 10 percent fuel savings, which is huge, which is basically half of the fuel savings we did with the newer versions of airplanes and uh, engines. So there are promising solutions beyond the propulsion system which we need to address now and put into place to actually get to those levels before we then look at the breakthrough technologies that will come with totally new concepts. The problem is you spoke about all that technology to finances but the issue is that according to the International Civil Aviation it estimates that between now, between 2020 and 2050, carbon emissions will rise between 300 to 700 percent. Your air traffic is going to double by 2037 to 8.2 billion. So even though you're coming out with those solutions, they might not be able to meet those targets. Is that also a big concern for you? Well, I think the, the technology is improving all the time and we're constantly putting out um, uh, new engines onto existing aircraft, much more than we ever have done before. So updating the technology through life. Um, an engine and aircraft that comes into service, by the time it goes out of service, it's had numerous updates. So we're constantly refreshing the technology, which is key. Sustainable aviation fuel, as we've been discussing, is a good way in the, in the medium term of um, improving that, that carbon impact. And also, um, uh, Sandra was saying, operations, which are probably one of the easier areas to approach. Um, with data and understanding how the aircraft's operated, just as an example, um, when you come into land in the descent phase, so you're just um, uh, starting, starting to come down towards your airport, if you come down at a constant rate of descent, you can save 150 kilograms of um, carbon just doing that. Now, Alejandro, I mean, it, we were discussing those targets that have been set by the industry, but some airlines have voluntarily now announced, for example, IAG and Cantis, that uh, they are actually going to go uh, net zero by 2050, not even half. Is this really realistic, these targets? C can you really achieve them? I mean, I know we have the technology, but even then, given that how air traffic is growing, can they really reach that? Well, I think that, as has been explained, uh, there are a number of, there's no one solution, right? And so there, there's going to be a number of initiatives that will enable certain companies that really have the desire to do this to, to pro potentially reach that. Uh, in the very short term, the carbon offsetting and reduction scheme for international aviation, CORSI, is going to come in. So this is a market-based measure that will be used by all of the international operators to reduce their carbon footprint. Uh, alternative fuels... But here in this program, they're going to invest in other programs really to offset the carbon emission that's been produced. Not that they are burning less fuel, but they're investing in more greener programs technology. They're investing or they're buying certificate emissions units that are uh, that will help reduce the carbon footprint of aviation. And so, again, the the push for sustainable aviation fuels is is very much it, a part of this mix. And in a region such as the Middle East, you only have a very very few options in which to produce these fuels. So you have. Uh, for example, the, the, the work that we are doing with halophyte plants that are based on desert uh, plants that are grown with seawater in, in salty conditions. You have uh, waste gases, you have municipal solid waste, and then you have a number of other potential technologies that could come into the fore. So this is something that is happening and it's, it's happening co constantly and, and these updates are continually coming into the industry. And so I think it is doable. It is going to be a challenge but dual. Sandra, the problem is that you're investing, you're working on this technology, it is quite expensive. Uh, airlines, if you look at them as a business model, it, they, the margins are really thin. Will they be willing to invest and adapt these technologies? Because eventually they're going to be quite expensive and that will impact their bottom lines or their profits. Well, it will be our duty to make it affordable for the, air, for the whole industry and I think today the whole industry recognizes it. it has to be our priority and everyone takes the right decision to that path and technology will improve and we talked about it earlier on, fuel will be, sustainable aviation fuel will be less and less expensive so there will be several measures which at the end will make it economically viable. But that will take time. 
How long do you reckon that before we reach that point, roughly? Which point? The point? I mean, where this becomes commercially viable for airlines to start adapting, adopting this technology. Well, if you look at it, even in the last years, buying our new aircraft with new engines, but also a huge number of modifications on the aircraft, which make them burn less fuel, is a direct cost saving for the airline. So they have, as well as we have, all interest in getting to newer products, which do in fact burn less fuel and therefore reduce their costs. But if you talk about electric, do you think electric planes, even if it's for short haul, is that going to happen any time in the next decade or it could be longer? I think the solutions will vary on depending on what kind of aircraft you're talking about. If we talk about regional aircraft, a hundred pack seater flying uh, in the region of the Middle East or in Europe, this is probably something achievable in the early to mid 2030s. If you talk about bigger airplanes like 350, which brings you from one part of the globe to the other part of the globe, there is no single solution, but a combination of solutions that we have to bring together to actually reduce our environmental footprint. So Phil, that's the real problem, that you might have an electric plane to fly short distances, but when it comes to long haul flights, more than say 1,500 miles, we still don't have a solution. And that's where maximum carbon emissions being produced. So what's, how are we going to tackle that issue? Yes, electrical capability may be replacing uh, a large proportion of the propulsive power uh, that, that gives you thrust and moves you through the air with smaller aircraft. We can also use similar technology to enhance those larger gas turbines that do burn fuel, but use that electrical technology to support the gas turbine to reduce the amount of fuel that is burned. So yes, it's a big challenge for the long haul, but I think the technologies we're pulling through are going to bring significant reductions in, in the way they operate and the amount of fuel they use tomorrow. And there are other areas like materials, for example, that will help us also reduce the weight of the aircraft and by definition the fuel consumption. And the fellow flight program I mentioned where you're actually pairing aircraft, that is very meaningful for long range flights obviously and gaining there 5 to 10 percent of fuel consumption just by the way you operate the aircraft is a very big reduction. So if you take all of these measures together, together yeah. actually it, we have solutions that are meaningful for long range flights. They're meaningful for the long term but the problem is right now because if you look at what's happening uh, there is uh, there's something called the flight shame program that started as you know where people are voluntarily not flying uh, led by you know teenager Greta Thunberg. We've already seen signs that there has been a drop in, uh, in, in air, tra air passenger traffic in some parts of Europe and if this movement gets caught on lesser people might start flying. That's going to impact companies like you who are investing so much in technology because you need the money for that. Is that also a concern? I think aviation is a global asset which has helped the world to get closer together. It allows passengers, goods to travel. I do believe it is our duty as aerospace industry to get to a sustainable aviation industry. So it's not up to us to tell the people you should fly, you should fly more, you should fly less. It is our duty to make aviation sustainable and we really believe in that and every measure we take goes into that direction. Alejandro, you have the final word. Is taxation the answer? I think that policy has a role to play, but I think that innovative business models also have a role to play. And so I think there's a combination of measures that need to come to play and make this a, a reality. And so I think that uh, you know, the aviation industry is working very hard to, to be sustainable, and I think that it's going to accomplish the goals that it has set for itself. Well, those are the views. We, there are, there's a lot of promise as far as long-term Answers are needed for this issue, but in the short term, there are quite a few challenges which the industry is working towards, but we don't know whether they will be able to produce answers in the short term. Thank you all for all your thoughts and joining us on this program. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>